Hmm. The crimes committed in this list might be a little graphic, so this is just a warning for anyone who's sensitive to content. Hi, my name is Jessa, and please join me as we look together top 10 evil women who spent their life in prison. And before we begin in the last video I was in, top 10 messed up acts performed by evil queens, I did give you guys a riddle. The riddle was, what is a single digit number with no value? The answer is... Zero. Your next riddle will be at the end of this video. Anyways, let's get started. Number 10, Clara and Katerina Mororova. Clara was actually a very loving and acceptable mother to her two sons, Andrej and Jacob, where they would take trips and summer camps and she would play with her sons all the time. It wasn't until a new child entered their home by the name of Annika and Clara and her sister Katerina were part of a cult named the Grail Movement. When Annika came into the picture, it was under the support of Katerina and Clara's sister where she was told by Katerina that Annika was a 13 year old who escaped from a trafficking gang that had physically harmed her. Annika was also apparently very sick and suffered many illnesses which gained Clara's sympathy. Clara wanted to adopt Annika after bonding with her so quickly and even had a mystery doctor tell her how to take care of Anika. This same doctor told Clara that her sons were a problem and needed to be cured from their evil spirits. It was then Clara would do an affluent amount of violating and harmful things to her biological sons like shock therapy, making them eat their own flesh, dunk their heads in water, as well as invite others to her cult to do the same. Anika would also lie to make the aggression towards the boys even worse. It was until a man named Edward had a CCTV camera for his newborn baby when Clara was caught in the act. Clara and her sisters were caught and it turns out Anika was actually a 33 year old woman posing as a 13 year old named Barbara, who had a disease that made her look younger than she actually was. She was eventually arrested as well, which if you've seen the movie Orphan, it's actually based where this was from. Clara got 9 years in prison and her sister got 10 years since her sister Katerina actually knew who Barbara was the whole time. Number 9, Cordelia Botkins. However you were in your relationships or affairs, be aware of ex-lovers who might never want to let you go. Cordelia met her lover, a highly regarded reporter, John Preston Dunning, when he was bicycling in San Francisco. At that point, she was 41 years old, at 9 years his senior, and although they were already married to their own partners, John was very smitten by Cordelia. John eventually was left by his wife, who discovered the infidelity, but for Cordelia, her husband was pretty cool with it. John also had issues with gambling debts, and he was let go from his job because he was a heavy drinker, so he had to move in with Botkin's hotel. Their affair lasted for about three years, but ended when John was rehired to cover the Spanish-American War. When he left San Fran, he told Cordelia, baby girl, I am not coming back, and he even reconciled with his wife because he was leaving for Cuba, where he helped survivors of the Spanish battleships during the Battle of Santiago de Cuba. Cordelia, however, didn't care for this and wanted him back, so she sent anonymous letters to his wife Elizabeth detailing her husband's affairs. Unfortunately, it got worse when Elizabeth opened a box of candies addressed to her and her sister with the words, With love to yourself and baby, passionately and fond of candy. Elizabeth and her older sister died from arsenic poisoning and their father was able to decipher their handwriting from the previous letters to Cordelia and Cordelia went to life imprisonment. Number 8, Mary Sue Hubbard. It was always in the 1950s where a lot of crap happened that led us to the chaos we know today. And for Mary Sue Hubbard, she is also known as the wife of the founder of Church of Scientology, Ron Hubbard. She was sentenced in the federal court in the 1980s to four years in sentence prison for her role in the conspiracy to plant church spies in government agencies, steal government documents, and bug at least one government meeting. She told US District Judge Norma Holloway Johnson that she sincerely and publicly apologized for her actions. Johnson ordered Hubbard, who had been freed pending appeal for her 1979 conviction in the case, to turn herself into the federal officials in three weeks during the time in three weeks to begin serving her sentence. Hubbard, who lived in Los Angeles at the time, was the last of 11 church leaders who were indicted in the conspiracy in August 1978 to go to prison. The indictments came after the FBI raided the church headquarters back then in Los Angeles in 1977, and the raids were said to be the largest ever conducted by the FBI at the time. Documents introduced in courts by prosecutors in 1979 contended the operatives of the church initiated numerous break-ins at government official offices, including the Justice Department's, and they secretly placed a listening device in the Internal Revenue Services conference room, and all in apparent effort to combat what the church alleged government harassment. Judge Johnston commented that she didn't know whether the government had harassed the church, but she quotes, Even if I assumed there was harassment, I still can't accept what she did as excusable. Number 7, Natalia Guerrera. Speaking of religious cults, Natalia Guerrera was definitely part of one where she had sacrificed her own two-day-old infant and burning him to death as part of a satanic ritual. She was finally apprehended by police after evading capture for two years. Just two days after giving birth, Natalia agreed to have a baby, Jesus, quote unquote, killed after the leader of Antares de la Luz cult and the father of the child, Raymond Gustavo Castillo Gaete, declared that the infant to be an antichrist and that the sacrifice would help prevent the end of the world on December 21st, 2012. Natalia had previously stated in her defense that she was drugged at the time of the murder, but a forensic psychologist declared that the numbers were not under the influence when the sacrifice 
sacrifice was carried out. After her sentence, Natalia managed to flee and was on the run for two years. Investigators noted that she had lived in different houses and even changed her identity in order to evade capture. The police also noted that after being apprehended, she did not show remorse and claimed that she was manipulated by the cult and was therefore innocent. Number 6, Eileen Warrenos. Eileen Warrenos was a convicted serial killer as she targeted only men as an adult worker. She had up to seven victims and would target specifically motorists, men who would meet her on the road as she acted as a hitchhiker. She was incarcerated at the Florida Department of Corrections BCI death row for women and she tried to appeal to the US Supreme Court which was later denied. At that point, she dismissed her legal counsel and terminated all pending appeals. She then would go off to say, in quotes, I killed those men, I robbed them as cold as ice and I'd do it again. There is no chance in keeping me alive or anything because I'll kill again and I hate crawling through my system. I am so sick of hearing this, she's crazy stuff. I've been evaluated so many times, I'm competent, sane, and I'm trying to tell the truth. I'm the one who seriously hates human life and would kill again. After extreme mistreatment, she suffered while imprisoned and the inhumane management given to her by the officers. In her final interview, she expressed to the media in quote, You sabotaged me, society, and the cops, and the system. An attacked woman got executed and was used for books and movies and so on. Her final on-camera words were, Thanks a lot, society, for railroading my ass. She was later executed by lethal injection. Number 5, Patricia Krenwinkel. As of 2022, Patricia Kerwinkle, now 74, was convicted of seven counts of first degree in August 1969 for the Manson family attacks that left seven people dead. She was also known as the Manson Girl when she was arrested in Mobile, Alabama. It was during the summer of 1969 where Charles Manson ordered his members to end the lives of seven people in Los Angeles, including actress Sharon Tate. During the trial, Patricia Charles' attorney, Paul Fitzgerald, suggested that although her fingerprints were found inside the Tate home, she might have been an invited guest or friend. Seemingly unfazed by the possibility of a guilt verdict and a death sentence, Patricia reported spent much of the trial drawing doodles of devils and other satanic figures. All during the trial, she remained loyal to the Mansons and the family. Demonstrated of this unity included walking hand in hand with Atkins and Van Houten, singing songs written by Manson, as well as shaving their heads and carving a giant X on their foreheads. Number four, Sarah. Alderte. Sarah Maria Alderte Villarreal is a Mexican alleged serial killer who was convicted for supposedly heading a drug smuggling and human sacrifice cult with Adolfo Costanzo. The members of the cult dubbed by the media the narco satanist called her the godmother with Costanzo as the godfather. In 1989, the killings grew more frequent and gained attention when American tourist Mark J. Kilroy, a university student of Texas, a University of Texas student on spring break was abducted. Was abducted. Costanzo's Eldrete and the rest of the cult went on the run when detectives discovered their shrine. They found human hair, brains, teeth, and skulls at the site. Eventually, the police found their hideout. Eldrete was convicted of criminal association in 1990 and jailed for six years. In the second trial, she was convicted of several of the killings of the head of the cult's headquarters and sentenced to 30 years and in prison. If Eldrete is ever released from prison, American authorities plan to prosecute her for the murder of Mark. If Eldrete is ever released from prison, American authorities plan to prosecute her for the death of Mark. Number three, Leonardo Cianciulli. Known as the soap maker of Corrigio, Leonardo Cianciulli was a serial killer from Italy. Cianciulli was devastated after learning that her son was going off to prepare for the war War in World War II. To keep him safe, Chantrulli offered human sacrifices. She killed three of her neighbors with an axe and made tea cakes out of their remains. Not only would Chantrulli eat these cakes, but she would also serve them to guests and Chantrulli's third gift victim, Virginia, who was made into both teas and cakes and bars of soap. Once again, this soap was gifted to friends and neighbors and Chantrulli was eventually sentenced to 30 years in prison. Sort of sounds like the femme version of Sweeney Todd, but a Bath and Body Works edition. Number two, Enrica Marta. Often referred to as a vampire owing to the nature of her crimes, it is I generally believe that Marta kidnapped kids off the streets of Barcelona and put them in her work brothel. It's also believed that Marta killed minors and used their blood and remains in various elixirs. She then sold these elixirs to the rich, claiming that they treated dangerous ailments like tuberculosis. Twelve victims have been linked to her, although it's suspected that she killed many more. Although. Some historians defend Marta and argue that her crimes weren't as bad or as many as the traditional story suggests. She was actually detained and jailed in the Renia Amalia prison. Further investigation revealed more housing in Saint Felio de Yobergat, property of Marta's family. Here they found remains of children in vases and jars, as well as books of remedies, including a list of rich clients who the police apparently tried to hide from being leaked, including rich politicians, doctors and businessmen, and bankers. Kind of similar to a case we had in our modern times with a guy whose name rhymes with Lefri Niepsen. Although she she was arrested. She was never tried since she died in the hands of her prison mates and companions ended up lynching her. Apparently, some say her wealthy clients hired the prisoners to shut her up. It's very interesting how history repeats itself sometimes as this was in 
1913, proving to be one of Victorian era's most infamous criminals. Emilia Dare could be one of the most prolific serial killers in human history. Back in Victorian England, she was paid for adopting babies in a practice known as baby farming. Amelia Dyer turned this into her profession and adopted numerous children. She began by keeping them for a time until they passed of a natural cause, but ultimately turned into disposing them shortly after adopting them, thereby keeping the money without having to raise them. One of Dyer's victims was actually flo found floating in the River Thames on March 30th, 1896, leading to her arrest and eventual execution. While six victims have been confirmed, it's believed that Dyer may have killed up to 400 children throughout her life. In one of the most sensational trials of the Victorian period, she was found guilty and later hung. Who was your favorite, if you had one? And did you learn anything interesting today? Let me know. And for your riddle, it is forward I am heavy, backwards I am not. What am I? Be sure to put your answer in the comments below and I'll reveal the answer in the next video. Top 10 terrifying places in Japan haunted by ghosts. That's it for today. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jessa. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see your beautiful faces in the next one. Goodbye.